<laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. We're here. Uh, this is your virtual start party for the 9th of February, 2014. I'm your host, Scott Lewis. Fraser Kane is off fighting crime in Canada. No, he's got a flight going out. So he's going, I believe, to see Brian Brushwood in Austin. So, hello, Shwood. Uh, nice. Give him some beers and give him free tuition to scam school. Go to Salt Lake. Yes. Go to Salt Lake. Gay. Salt Lake. Just say that more. Say it. What? Camera's on you. <laughs> say it. Salt Lake! I Yay. love that place. Anyway. So, we're going to be completely professional and not silly at all tonight, because whenever Nicole and I are together, it's always serious business. So, if you guys have never seen our show before, what we do is we get astronomers from across the world, and we hook up telescopes to their cameras, whether it be webcam or even higher quality professional cameras, and we stream them live into Hanging on Air. And we have with us Nicole Gallucci, which is our PhD astronomer, will be help, helping explain the science behind all the beautiful images that we are looking at. Joining us, and then we'll be going through here, Chris is one of our astronomers. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Morning. How you doing, yeah. Internet? Yeah, you now you're from the the UK, right? Uh, yeah, the the accent kind of gives it away. Well, hey, you and can the good that. morning. <laughs> and the good morning bit. Yeah, it's gonna be early there. So whereabouts are you? Uh, in sunny Mansfield, uh, minus three degrees and uh, freezing my um bits off. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze that collimator off. Gotcha. All right. Uh, next with us we have David Dickinson in the slightly warmer area, but not too much hey, tonight. Yeah, not too bad. I have my hair dryer ready. Hey, <laughs> nice. Uh, so do <laughs> I. I've got to really tease this. And new... I have my. I, I think you can see my heater running back here, so it's it's a little cool here, not chilly, but. Very good. Uh, we also have James, the um, the evil looking Blair Witch Project. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy, James. Hi, James. And we're going off camera. <laughs> also, we have Tom, Nathy. How are you doing, Tom? Oh, fine now, finally. Get, uh, are you ready to be melting. serious? Oh, I'm always serious. Always serious. Yeah, like, always serious. Like the dog star. Yes. Very mm-hmm. good. Awesome. awesome. So uh, I will let everyone know you can reach us many different ways. Uh, please give us some comments, questions, requests on the Google+. Plus. I have a, another monitor up right here for Google+, Plus event page. Also, leave questions on YouTube. Nicole is checking those out. We're also on Twitter at the underscore VSP, and there's a Facebook page as well that I have this up on, but really, what are you doing over there? Come join us because it's Facebook. Yeah. So... Hey, I, we're I'm not okay. elitist at all here. At all, that I, I put on Facebook because I have to. So I'm going to head over to David, and what are we looking at, David? Oh, we're looking at uh, a blurry view of Jupiter right now. I think the dew is getting the better of my telescope right now. I may have to clear no. it off. We'll but, make it uh, a don't and clear it up. Yeah, I'll I'll just I'll mute real quick so you don't have to hear the hair dryer. Awesome. So you do that. I'm going to hop on over to Chris because Chris has something really cool. We have Mars. Oh! It's Mars. Oh, my goodness. It's a red fuzzy blob that's bouncing that's around on the screen. Oh! So, you know, what time is it over there? It is, what, uh, 2.30? It's half two. Yeah, it's 2.30 in the morning. Can I write you from the future? From the future, with <laughs> Mars in the future. So what telescope are you using there, Chris? Um, an 18-inch Schmidt-Cassegrain telescope. Uh, with my two times Barlow on the back of it. Um, so it's, it's got a decent focal length on it, but in shooting through clouds, so no, no, no amount of zooms are going to fix that. Um, yeah, Mars well, reaches up opposition on April 8th, so uh, it's going to be its best viewing for 2014 here this spring. And if you guys can, you know, hang around for the next, oh, two and a half hours, I can give you Saturn really early. <laughs> you, you, I'm not Yay, that much of a trooper, crazy. but you can do it. <laughs> now, I was really, really excited enough. for Saturn to come around. Wow. The, this opposition to Mars isn't the greatest, but it's getting better every every 26 months or so Mars comes into opposition. And the opposition in 2016 is going to be better, and the one in 2018 is going to be nearly as good as... Remember the one in 2003 that was 
the best opposition in 50,000 years that kept going around the news. Yeah, it was as big as the moon. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that's every, that's every August it? now. Yeah. Super Mars. Oh, no. Don't. No. no. Yeah. Oh, it's, we yeah, are not it, doing you know, Super Mars. It's, it's coming. So. It, 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 it's it, it, there. <laughs> then we need to also coin Mini Mars, and we'll be fine with it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to hop on over to James's view real quick. Oh, nice. So what it's, are we looking a, at? It's amazing that uh, right when the broadcast started... The clouds come in, of, of course. course. Well, yeah, because you want to do something. That's their job. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just uh, looking at the moon through my, uh, this is just a Nexstar 6SE uh, Celestron telescope uh, and a Canon 6D attached to it. Um, Very nice. So where are you from, clouds. James? Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama. It's a little, <clears> bit warm. <throat> it's a little warmer than the rest of us here tonight, right? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, probably about... 35, I think, here. 35? Wow. It's above freezing. Yeah, yeah you're fine. It is above freezing. Yeah. I guess <laughs> yeah. I'm the only privileged one here tonight in Los Angeles. I'm complaining because it's 16 yeah, Celsius it's... out. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Minus four here right now. Oh, man. So I had David, to cancel my first viewing of the semester because it was so damn cold. I wanted, didn't want my visitors to get frostbite. So why not? Yay, winter. Okay. Yeah. That's part of the charm of astronomy. I know, but people bring little children, so you know. <laughs> you just throw them on the fire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we do not no, talk children in the VSP. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. My apologies. <laughs> I was a bad boy. Uh, Tom, it, <laughs> it wasn't me this time. I know. I, I mean, Nicole and I are bad enough when it comes to being completely off topic, and not to mention the fire would make the scene worse for your telescope. It would. Because it would. So think of the scene. The hot air. Don't think of the children. It's not about the children. It's about right. the scene oh, that you're destroying. Oh, somebody think of the scene. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so back to astronomy real quick, as James's <laughs> view of the moon is uh, going away. Uh, David mentioned something earlier before we went live about the moon that was really interesting, oh. and I thought it was awesome. Oh, the the moon happens to be in the non uh, zodiacal constellation of Orion tonight, which is kind of weird. There, there's actually huh. six. There's actually six non zodiacal constellations the moon can cross through, and let's see if I can remember it. It's Auriga, Orion, Ophiuchus, Crater, Corvus, and I believe Scutum is the other one that the moon. Isn't can Ophiuchus zodiac really in the zodiac now? It's it's along the ecliptic, but it's not yeah. one of the twelve. It's not one of the twelve constellations it's the of uh, it's along the ecliptic. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's yeah, yeah. The, the the ecliptic. The sun passes through thirteen. So, but the moon, the tilt of the moon's orbit is five degrees relative to the ecliptic, so it can wander about ten times its diameter away. So it can wander into Orion occasionally. So I think that's kind of cool that it's oh, yeah. Second. So if that's the plane of the Earth going around the Sun, and then the the Moon's orbit's going to be those are cards. That's a plane. Five degrees. Yeah, it's going to be off by five degrees, which I I can't quite do five degrees because it is quite small. But well, right. by, but when we're it, talking about distances like the Moon, we're talking right. quite quite a big distance there. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, Sext Sextins is the other constellation I just remembered that mm. it can be in as well. That's not on the ecliptic, but the moon can pass through it. That's pretty far southern, isn't it? It's uh, just south of Leo, constellation okay. Leo. It can nick like the corner of Sextins. <laughs> okay. huh. Weird stuff that's in my brain. <laughs> hmm. you know, my, David has a lot of stuff in his brain. <laughs> that's okay. I have my moon map up in the area that... Um, we're looking at is part of the Clavius and Tycho region, the southern pole of the moon. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Yeah. I, I noticed that the uh, area that the U-2 rover is in, the Bay of Rainbows up there, is just getting sunlight again. The sun is rising there again tonight. Oh, the yeah. um, uh, Jade, Jade Rabbit? So yeah. we're gonna hear. We think we're gonna hear from the rover. I don't. I don't know, but it's yeah. it's just its solar panels should be just getting uh, the first hits of sunlight right now. So. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, do we have any updates? You know, the, the last, and I don't know if everyone knows that, China does have a, a rover on the moon, which is, I think, all sorts of awesome. And But there's a, been a little bit of a problem with it. And I have you been following the media from China? I, like I, saw, 
I saw Patrick Stewart wearing a, yes. a rover outfit on da- on the Daily Show the other day. Yes, that was amazing. <laughs> what? So you know, as as we often do, we anthropomorphize different objects. You know, curiosity and the the Chinese media government has also done the same thing with uh, with Jade Rabbit. And so it's tweeting that it might not come back to life after this lunar day comes back around because of these malfunctions. And uh, if you haven't seen, I think it was uh, about four days ago, John Stewart on The Daily Show had a bit about it, and Patrick Stewart was <laughs> that up. Was, that was a riot. Oh. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I, really, I really do hope that that the that the rover comes back online. I think it's awesome that we are still having something active going on the surface of the moon, no matter which country it comes from. I think that's really cool. Absolutely. Save you yeah. too. Save you too. <laughs> so we're gonna head over to David's view. Even we're looking at the the fuzzy Jupiter again. Yeah, it's it's getting it's it's a little fuzzy. It's a little turbulent. We have the great red spot actually turned forward. I've been tracking it here for the last few hours. It's wow. it's on one of the uh, on the on the top on the upper cloud band. My left, it would be the viewer's right because I know it inverts it on this mm-hmm. here. So okay. it, and I always thought the great red spot was kind of a misnomer because it looks more kind of brick brown to me than right. red. The, the it dirty doesn't, brown spot just doesn't it, sound good for marketing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it goes anywhere from kind of salmon colored to to kind of a brownish. I've never seen it look like cherry red before. Yeah, so. me neither. Is it thought oh, that it, was it redder? Nicola, was it redder I love you. 400 years ago? Yes. It has it has changed. I know Bob King did an article on Universe Today that it it has changed shape and size over the past few centuries since we've been observing it. And there's some talk about whether it may disappear here in, in this century because it seems to be shrinking right now. Right. Hmm. Well, I remember as a kid looking at it through my little 90-millimeter department store scope, and it, it was bright red. It was very easy to spot. Yeah. Ju- it's uh, Jupiter rotates like once every 9.9 hours. I think it's almost mm-hmm. once every 10 hours, so... Just in the span, I set up about three hours ago, and the Great Red Spot was almost transiting in the center, and now it's almost off the edge. By the end of the show, it'll be gone. So Jupiter, you can watch Jupiter rotate when it's at Mm -hmm. opposition. Well, it just passed opposition last month, but you can watch it rotate in the span of one night if you keep uh, keep an eye on it in a telescope. In the span of ten hours, it will rotate all the way around. That is really awesome. And what do you have over here, Chris? Uh, this is from earlier on uh, tonight before the, the show went live. This is the uh, red spot about oh, nice. an hour and a half ago. Can you zoom in a little bit in your Ooh. browser? Um, <coughs> you got your open in the shadow transit, too. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I just, saw that. I was imaging just, that, too. Cool. You just need to save it. I didn't, bo- I didn't set up this right. I'll be with you in a second on this one. Oh, very good. No pressure. Do it now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. You're not Fraser. Oh wait. Okay. <laughs> no. Clicking, clicking as fast as my cold fingers can go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Don't snap your fingers off. I... If my I... fingers fall off. It's all your fault. That's totally fine, and I will uh, yell right. at Fraser for it. No, I just need to screen share. Apparently. Right. Here we go. No, I'm joined by Russell. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there we go, Chris. Oh, that's it's great. Yeah, so you can see the shadow there of, of Europa going past. A little eclipse. A little, little eclipse. Such a tiny red dot, such a big shadow. Mm-hmm. Yes. But yeah, that was what? Uh, that's well, impressive. Well, now, hour and a half ago. I Actually, my, my scope had been recently sent off for repair, so I realized just before shooting that that all the collimation was gone. So I, I quickly tweaked it and then shot that. Oh, I love it. And uh, so Sterling, uh, Sterling made a comment here that ha, because Fraser's not here this week, we can see the red spot. When he's around, he scares it away, and that's so true. <laughs> But then also, when Tom's here, <coughs> we're going to see Supernovae and not notice it. So, <laughs> just going to put that out there real quick. Mm. There's, right, definitely, gonna... there's, no de- there's definitely no Supernovae in Jupiter tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? We could always find yeah. an impact. But that could be TMA, too, as far as I know. So I'm going to head back over to James's view of the moon. 
And so in this cell, we can see it's live going on because you know, we're seeing that the, well, the clouds going in front of it, first of all. But you can see the, uh, the, the air actually wobbling and, you know, wibbly wobbling because Doctor Who's awesome. And, uh, <laughs> hey, I got to use it in, my, in this week's space, uh, space Fan News video, too. It was awesome. I was very happy with that. Nerd, and this is nerd. why you don't want to build a fire near your telescope, because the fire will heat up the air and cause it to be even more wibbly-wobbly. Oh, Turns right. out that near the ground is where seeing is the worst, due to buildings and mountains and trees and all that stuff. And burning children, apparently. And burning <laughs> children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have wow. to keep my propane heater away from the scope, otherwise it will throw more yeah. turbulence at it. Right. Yeah. Oh, and, look at the ray patterns on Tycho. Wow. Just the little, on my screen, it's uh, just up above left of center. That's the crater Tycho, and then you can see some of the rays. There we go. Yeah, when the color, when the, the contrast is just right, you can really yeah. see Yeah, so when the clouds are just crappy, right. you can... Yeah. 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 And those Certain are secondary uh, secondary impact craters from the initial mm -hmm. impact of the, of the crater Tycho. That's yeah. where they found the monolith in 2001. Exactly. <laughs> Say, wave to Haywood Floyd. <laughs> well, I was thinking, that, yeah. go. that brighter material usually indicates a younger crater on the moon's surface. It actually darkens right. um, with time. Yeah, and that's where, what is it, Surveyor 4 landed? Or I think in that so. Neighborhood? I think it was near Tycho. Yeah. I've had someone tell me it's pronounced Tico. Uh, Tico, it, it yeah. Tico. But, but most people say Tycho that I've ever heard, but I, I think the correct pronunciation is Tico. Yeah, I yeah. believe it is Tico Brahi. <laughs> believe else. it is Drunken Party Man. Yep, with, with no his, nose. With his, with his nose, yes. Gold, silver nose. <laughs> hey, you like the bling. Bling, bling. <laughs> So going back to some of these questions here in the Q&A app, and actually that's another way, too. You can also reach us using the Q&A app here on YouTube and Google+, Plus, where I can see the questions, and I can select them, and they are actually bookmarked in the video as they go along, which I think is really cool. So as it's jumping up, let's see here. Uh, Bob Moeller uh, made the comment, the red spot was just about brick red in the 50s and 60s. I was not around in the 50s and 60s. I think maybe Tom is the only one that was. <laughs> so it is changing yeah. color. Respect your elders, Scott. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I respect you, Tom. Oh, I do yeah. respect you, bro. <laughs> the, the most color I've ever seen in it is kind of a salmon pink maybe about a decade or so ago. Mm -hmm. okay. To me, recently it looks more kind of brownish brownish to maybe a dark brick red. Okay, showing my yeah. ignorance of planetary astronomy here, do we know what causes the color changes other than certain chemicals <laughs> certain chemicals? chemicals coming up higher in the cloud, like the cloud spot? I, you know, honestly, Crickets. I don't know. I, I don't know what the organics are in, mm -hmm. in the red spot. Uh, you know, I, I would imagine that you know, it's hydrocarbons or something or other, and right. as the uh, Jupiter swings to and fro from the sun, uh, and uh, it's probably just being photoreactive at the surface, and then you got all the other storms coming, thrown, flying past yep. it too. I know once a decade or so we lose the, I believe, the southern equatorial belt of those yes, two main belts that, that you see. Right. That's no, but, weird. But that's the, creepy. <laughs> I'm just going to go on a limb and say the reason why we have it is because of fluid dynamics. Could and be. That's, well, that's, yeah. that's a good coverall. Hey. Yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> just, just, just a few years ago, we had lost that uh, southern equatorial yeah. belt, and Jupiter only had one. That happens about once every decade or so. Well, we hit that up a couple weeks ago. That, that we lost a belt? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I forget who it was that was on there. Uh, looking at Chris's, you, it's plainly obvious. It's at the top on his image. Let's see here. Well, that Chris's yeah, I can up. See it just, yeah, you can see it just fine. Well, fine-ish. You, you can see the banding, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was really weird when it was really weird Ooh. when it was gone. 
Um, yeah. Because you're used to seeing Jupiter, pictures of Jupiter with both bands. And yet, when you look through a telescope and you only saw one, if you're used to seeing Jupiter through a telescope, it was really disconcerting. That well, something that obvious was... was you know, Dave, Dave's picture is a little bit clearer, you, you, but you can definitely see the banding. And I, I have it straight over wider. here. Yeah, yeah, but Chris has moons, or he did. Uh, I, do, I, have two, I have two kind of twinkling in and out you might see off to my left, your right. Those might be stars. You got My Europa. screen contrast is terrible. Yeah, you got Europa and Io and a star yeah. in between the two. Yeah, there, there's actually two six-magnitude stars in the field yeah. right now, so when you're looking at it with the eyepiece, it looks like Jupiter has six moons right now. Oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great uh, uh, alignment of stars in and the, moons there. In the, the moons aren't quite in one two, one, three, one, two, three, four order right now. It's kind of interesting. After yeah. the show, they will be. Io and Europa are going to change places, then, then they will be in one, two, three, four order on one side. Cool. Oh, I, wow. say, I think I've got Europa closest at the moment, and then Io is the next one along in my image. Yeah. I, think. I can kind of see it yeah. when the scene's no, good. The, the, <laughs> I think you got that star. Is that the star? Well, no, you got a star up above there, so that could be Io. I, I'm looking at a planetary <laughs> program here, so. Hopefully it's not a supernova. Oh, oh God. Hey. Uh, <laughs> No, it's wow. in Jupiter. I said that. The, <laughs> we have a very serious question, guys, um, from Paul super, Gracie. Super if serious. Jupiter loses its belt, does it have suspenders to keep its pants up? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll <laughs> finally know the age-long question: If Jupiter has boxers or briefs, no. and we don't know right now. <laughs> My question, and I've asked Gangster a plan- style. I, I've asked a planetary scientist this when I was writing an article about it: is why do we always lose that belt but not the other belt? And they don't yeah. quite know why. One yeah. belt seems to be permanent, and the other one seems to like to disappear once in a while. But they're not sure why that is. It's it's amazing yeah. that we still don't know so much about these systems. These I, I know when these they Im- patterns. when they imaged Jupiter a few years ago when it lost its belt in uh, near infrared with Hubble, uh, they could see the belt was actually there. It was just kind of hiding. Yeah. You could still see it. So it, I wonder if it's just if it's just uh, at a lower altitude, kind of like how Saturn's cloud bands are at a lower altitude below this, you know, it, yellowish it haze, be. which is why we don't see its storms. It could just be sinking. Yeah. Yeah, down. it's just sunk in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So uh, we have um, a question here. Looks like, well, not a question, more say a request. Uh, we haven't seen NGC two one six nine yet this year. Uh, perhaps someone can find it. Well, uh, sorry, Jamie. First of all, it's in Orion, which is where the moon is right now. And I don't believe we have anyone set up for any sort of DSOs. So we, we are all planetary tonight. <laughs> we are all planetary yeah. tonight. We're so all in the solar system. No deep I'm sky moved. objects. Play my twenty dollar webcam. But no look, it's it. a planet. It's a freaking planet. It's awesome. It's a failed star. It is a well. <laughs> no! it, it, it didn't you know, try that. It didn't it try didn't very try, hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like eight. It would have to be eighty times more massive. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. It was a clump that formed around the sun. It was never going to be a star. Right. It's just like saying I'm a failed woman because yeah. my chromosomes <laughs> and the way they were just didn't really work out that way. I didn't no, try I'm, not even, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm being active right. science over here. I don't know what you image people <laughs> are doing. Oh, my goodness. We also, so yeah. where is Jupiter in the sky for people? Because you can walk outside your it's backyard in, now, assuming you don't have clouds, and, and, and take a look. It's in the constellation Gemini right now. And, and when right, right at sunset, it's one of the first things you'll notice off to the east. It's the brightest object in the east, high in the east right now at sunset. Yeah. So when you go out to your car at night and say, what's that bright yeah. thing? Chances are you're looking at Jupiter. This and the, the moon is only about 12 degrees away, so tomorrow night the moon is going to be very close to Jupiter. It's not going to quite occult it or anything, but it's going to be within a few degrees of it tomorrow night. Enough that peop- you get people going, what's that bright thing next to next the moon? Next to the moon, yeah. 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 I, I, have, I have actually managed to see Jupiter in the daytime near the moon. It is, oh, wow. it is possible. It's, it's uh it's easier to see with binoculars in the naked eye, but it is possible to see it. Because uh, you have a daytime. point of reference? Because you have the moon yeah. as a point of reference? Yeah. Right. Same as Venus. Venus is a little easier to see in the daytime in that regard. If you've got it near the moon, it's kind of actually, Venus is very easy to see in the daytime. Uh, we have a question about the, uh, an actual serious question about the band. Is the disappearing band seasonal? Does it correspond to Jupiter's orbit? And that is a fantastic question. You know, it's, it's, uh, 
not that far off. But it's it, it's roughly I say ten years. Sometimes it's nine. Sometimes it's eleven. But Jupiter's orbit's about eleven years. Right. So it, it's uh it's, it's close rough, to it's roughly close to it. Not exact. It, yeah, we can't really say it's going. Oh, it's going to disappear now like this year because it did it 11 years ago it, it seems to i'd have to look back at the years but i seem to remember it spanning anywhere from 7 to 13 or 14 years average 10 to 11 years you know i, I also wonder too if it has anything to do with tidal forces you know just dealing with its its satellites you know yeah mm. i mean obviously I it's not going to be anything crazy like we do here with with our moon just because the relative mass there, but should they have some sort of play on I, the movement of matter on the I, surface? I once, I once came across a paper, and I take this for what it's worth. I, I was like, I don't see how this would work, but somebody was trying to connect the orbit of Jupiter with the solar cycle, just saying that Jupiter orbits 11 years and the sun cycle is 11 years. And I was like, mm. well, but I don't know how you would connect those. I yeah. don't. Yeah. I think it's Solar just a dynamics are freaking awesome. I don't think they have anything to do with, with Ju- Jupiter with Jupiter. torquing it somehow. Yeah. Or, yeah. But it's, I was like, yeah, Jupiter I don't see the mechanism. Really I, can see, I can see them making the argument because Jupiter has strong magnetic fields and it's the flip of the sun's magnetic field. Like, I could see the jump, but the, the yeah. physics doesn't... I think it's a, with you. I think it's a matter of you could probably find some object in the solar system that would fit the span just by coincidence. Yeah. Right. What's yeah. going on? But it was interesting. But but that's what science is for because we can see why that's a way to jump and we can learn more about all the things, all the things. So I'm going to jump back over to James real quick so we can look at our moon. You know, it seems like we've got the the clouds, at least uh, playing nice. Yeah. Now. Yeah, I'm about to switch back to uh, my Zoom view here. Yeah. In the, addition to there. you two and uh, hopefully the <laughs> Jade Rabbit, uh, we still have the Laddie mission orbiting the moon, so that is the... Yeah, Laddie got extended, matter of fact. Lunar oh, Atmosphere Dust Environment Explorer. Yeah, yes. so they got extended, I think, another month. Yeah, yeah. Um, for, that, for that mission, oh. and then at the end, so at the end of its mission, which is now, I think, slated for late April, um, they're going to crash it into the surface which uh, I'm hoping they'll, posi- they'll do it when LRO, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, is in position to photograph it. That would be great. That would be, a, yeah. yeah so uh, we've got LRO, LRO and Laddie still in orbit. Uh, LRO image Laddie last week, I believe mm-hmm. it was. They released that image. That was kind of cool. In orbit, it was one, a, sat- it one was satellite blur. imaging another. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was blur. Just a- <laughs> and then they, <laughs> they caught it. They smooshed the blur so that you could actually see features of the spacecraft. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, and they go to the clouds again. Clouds? So so three. So that's three active missions. Yeah. Uh, currently yeah. studying the moon, unless I'm missing a, a fourth. And nope. three, three passive. It. There's still three passive missions going on, too. Got all the laser reflectors. Oh, there oh, yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, true. They're still up there. Yep. I'd, I'd hang out over on... Yahoo Answers Astronomy and Space section, so I get that question a lot. So I, I refer them to the Apollo site uh, that they where they do the ranging and all that. So yeah. it, it's rather an interesting way how they do that. Um, just real briefly, they can send out like a million photons towards the moon and expect to get ten back. Wow! <laughs> and they're still able to get get a good measurement off of that. This is using the 3.5 meter at Apache yeah. Point in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's Arizona. Um, cool. Yeah, it was featured on MythBusters, but I also uh, <coughs> learned that when I visited there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's an interesting project. Yeah, you know, they they found the 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 two Lunokhod uh, Russian rovers that are that are still up there, and they're they were able that. to get us. Yeah, they got a signal off of them, oh, that's and cool. the, the three uh, retro reflectors left by Apollo. The moon is receding from us. I think it's 2.5 centimeters a year. It's moving away. Yeah. Hey, about the about. same rate as my hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, my you IQ, know, yeah. Did, did you know at the current rate of recession, the uh, total solar eclipses won't occur, I think it's uh, in 600 million years from now, that the moon will actually be far enough away that total solar eclipses will no longer occur. Really? Mm-hmm. Get your eclipses now! Yeah. Get them while oh, yeah. they last, kids. Yeah. 
You, you, you know, I, I hear that argument sometimes from creationists. I've got that before, as they say, well, the, the, reason that the fact that we have total solar eclipses is one of the reasons that, you know, that points toward uh, an ultimate design. It's like, well, but that's only in our epoch right now. We're not going to have them forever. Uh, yeah. That makes my brain Yeah, they, they didn't occur before. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can you can go the other way too, and you can say you can go back in time and say there had to have been a point since the moon is moving away from us that uh, annular eclipses somewhere way back like a billion years or so ago probably the first annular eclipse that occurred. Mm -hmm. So it's but I've I've heard people say it's it's too perfect to be coincidence. I'm like yeah, but it's only in time and space right now. We just happen to be observing it. We're lucky yeah. that we can see them right now. Right. Grab, grab the TARDIS. Yeah. So wait, wait. A, a billion years ago there was a real supermoon. Yes, Whoa. the moon was much closer to us. In that, that ray of recession... It wasn't recession, super, because it was all the time. Yeah. yeah. That, that 2.5 centimeters a year wasn't constant either. It, it was receding from us when it was closer. It was receding faster. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. we have a request here, too, from Douglas Friday on that Uranus is in Pisces right now, about a magnitude 6.2. Is anyone yeah. able to get that? Yeah, it's, Uranus. I think it's below the horizon for me now. Yeah. Is it? Uh. Sorry, Doug, or Douglas. Don't want to mess up your name. But I don't think we're going to be able to get it tonight. No, it's behind the house here. Well, you can tear that down. Those are movable. <laughs> Horizons are not. So well, that you is... can excavate Start your... walking! <laughs> <laughs> we're not that... We're so mean to Chris that's out there at 3 a.m. in the U.K. And we're like, everyone <laughs> else is... No, they can't get moving. Yeah. Fine, I'll wake him up and get a sledgehammer out. Give us ten minutes. Very good. See? <laughs> I like okay. that can't do attitude. That's right. In the meantime, oh. I've got a planet, a freaking planet, a three freaking moons, planet. and a star <laughs> in the background. Right. There we go. Do, there there oh, you do oh, have wow. the background star, yeah. Not impressed. Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah, he's oh, turned the contrast way so we can see them. Yeah. Well, that could be a supernova. I mean, it's pretty bright. It could be. <laughs> you know what? It is bright. It, and it's got brighter <laughs> since we started. No comment. <laughs> so, oh those my God. are not in on this joke. Uh, actually, Tom, would you like to share with us what this is all about? Oh, since, yes. Um, since you have become the, the tookers of this joke. <laughs> Yes. Uh, what was it? About three, four weeks ago, uh, the, a small supernova, <laughs> not small, but a supernova yeah. went off. One of those tiny supernovas. Yeah, it was awesome! <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, and I forget the gentleman who imaged it, uh, but very nice capture, and we were all ooing and eyeing, and, and, uh, and, and I was carrying on saying, oh, yeah, M82 is an active galaxy, but I don't really... Th know it well for having producing supernova. And here's this big blob in the middle of the galaxy. You There's know. an active supernova happening in it the happening picture. Happening at, the, at, at that, that time, yes. And and that has I, not officially been discovered at the point that he's saying it. They could have been right, like, right. hey, that's weird, and been the discoverers. Yeah. No. So, no, yeah. He got beat out by some astronomy students. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. Yes, it is. It is really cool that they, they in a class project they got to discover a supernova. I, I told you in a in a Sky and Telescope forum I saw after that it's like, did you see these guys in this part, virtual star party that actually <laughs> was looking at the supernova? At the time? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, not those. That was us. Yeah, that was us. Yeah. <laughs> so those. to be fair, Tom, you were talking about it having a ridiculous star formation rate. In right. which you would expect to see a type two super or a core collapse supernova, and what mm -hmm. we actually saw is a white dwarf supernova, which is not what we would expect uh, to be the one that we'd be seeing in M eighty two. So to be fair, <laughs> you were talking about what? a different kind of supernova. This is the VSP. We are not about being fair. Here. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Well, and, and and also I I was explaining to somebody else is that chance favors the prepared mind. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at this, and we were not prepared to look for supernova. No. Well, yeah. And if anyone knows us at the virtual star party, we are always prepared. Always. <laughs> for yeah, I used to be a scoutmaster. <laughs> See, Nicole, we needed your expertise that night. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have seen it either. I'm a radio astronomer. Remember, I don't yeah. know what these things like, look like with my more eyes. more than one pixel, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, I <know. laughs> 
<laughs> Why aren't there any spectra? <laughs> Well, I, I know hunting for comets sometimes, too, is you, you don't want to be the one that cries wolf too many times because yeah. then people start looking at you and, and kind of thinking it's like you don't... Before I report something as a possible comet or supernova, I want to be really sure that right. what I'm looking at is... is a, I'm, I'm not just looking at a foreground star or a nebula that somebody's already discovered or a comet that somebody's already reported on. Yeah. Otherwise, you yeah. look kind of goofy in the right. scientific community. Well, you know... We're the people who would know to look at Astronomer's Telegram and to, you know, yeah. look. We, we would know the places to look. Yeah. It yeah. could have ha it could have been done. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We're not just going to be like on Twitter like, hey guys! Yeah. <laughs> we would actually know what the channels were to go through. That's true. <laughs> but it was a funny uh, evening, you know. Uh, is... You know, after the fact, it was, it was interesting to go back and look at it and it was just like, Plain as day. <laughs> yeah. Blinky, blinky, blinky. We, need, we need somebody to sit and vet everything as we're imaging it now. <laughs> yeah, so. Somebody who really knows the, the you know all these yeah, objects yeah. well. So if there's a grad student that doesn't like getting paid that wants to go through all of our videos of all time. They're in a grad oh, student. They don't like that, getting paid anyway. That does mm -hmm. raise the interesting possibility of things we might have missed that we yeah. <laughs> that Oh. Absolutely. I'm sure. I smell know. citizen science project. <laughs> yeah, who who wants to go through frame by frame all of the VSPs for the last two years? Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> we've been we've been doing this for over two years now. It's well, I guess at some point you can you can put together a transcription project, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked, and I and I lost track of the comment. When's the next space mission to Jupiter? When's the next spacecraft on Ju to Jupiter? Juno Juno is going to arrive in 2016. There you go. Which is so, awesome. Already on its in, way. In it's row. been up for 875 days according to the mission clock. So That'll only be that the second time we've orbited Jupiter. We've, we've sent New Horizons went by, both Pioneers, both Voyagers. Uh, Cassini, oh, there you go, Cassini mm -hmm. went by. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this will be the second one. I, I don't know what the next one that's going to go to the launch pad. Probably, I know there's talk about doing like Europa missions and things like that, but those are mm -hmm. way... Those are like over I think a away. Isa has yeah. it's Isa given Juice the green light. Does I Jupiter think, I think they have. Okay. I think you're right. Yeah. I think I think that they would have. Be the next one. I think that's I just not love the acronym like, is Juice. <laughs> I don't think that's going to like 2020 or something like yeah, that. Though. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. way out there. But it it will focus on on the Galilean moons as well as Jupiter itself. Yeah, it's it's kind of disparaging to think that a, a lot there's not a lot of missions going to the outer solar system next few years. We may mm -hmm. have we may lose our eyes in the outer solar system here within the next decade. Right, and that's well, terrifying. Mm -hmm. you know, because once you lose it, it's going to be really hard to get that momentum back so I, up. I, I to think get another mission out there. Cassini at Cassini at Saturn is shutting down in 2017. I believe they're going to deorbit it, mm -hmm. and and then Juno's oh, wow. only going to go for a couple of years. Then New Horizons does its thing at Pluto. Then after that, we have no outer solar system missions. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, with it's NASA shutting down, be. it's yeah, NASA shutting down its nuclear program for uh, yeah, uh, its power generators. They're 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 producing new plutonium, but they yeah they 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 shut down the what is it the advanced Sterling RTGs, the new RTGs. They're not developing. Oh, those is that what that was? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But but they are making more plutonium, but that's a long uh, involved pipeline. So they yeah. and they do have a little bit the. The, pi the plutonium we used on Curiosity, we actually bought from the Russians. Uh, I was surprised to find that. Are out. you sure about? <laughs> oh, the okay. So cause I, I believe yeah. they're processed at INL. Yeah, they are processing it. Right. So yeah, INL is Idaho up. National Labs, um, which is a nuclear site out there. But I didn't know that we bought it from the Russians. It's kind of funny. Yeah, the, the the stuff for Curiosity we bought from the Russians, but we just restarted the pipeline again to make. Yeah, the 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 Russian stuff was actually came out of their. Uh, uh, nuclear weapon program, yeah, which is awesome. I love yeah. that we are fueling space robots with nuclear weapons. That <laughs> yeah. is so cool. Well, and much, also much the and killing people. Yeah, yes. much well, better. Well, and, they're, and they're, they're recycling. They're recycling ICBMs as uh, launch vehicles for suborbitals. Mm -hmm. um, That's cool. Was uh, not SpaceX. What's the other one that that goes out of uh, Wallops Island? Um, 
they've used a couple of old ICBMs repurposed. You know, I, I'm not certain if that was the weaponized plutonium because I know what they use for spacecraft and what they use for weapons. It's a uh, it's plutonium 238 and 23. They're different ICBMs. Oh yeah. Right. So, but I know we did get it from the Russians. I, I know mm -hmm. what what you put in a, a nuclear weapon is is not the same isotope. Not the same. Yeah, that's right. That's spacecraft. right. But uh, yeah. it, before someone comments and corrects me, so. <laughs> yeah. David, someone was wrong on the internet. <laughs> oh my well, God. Let's let's hey. give some good information out real quick here. I've got a question. Let me find it. It's dropped down. But for somebody looking at getting, here we go. It is by uh, Jim Meeker here. It said, "What's the camera telescope store that sometimes is mentioned on here? Thinking of getting a new scope soon." So I don't think we have a specific one we mentioned, but there's quite a few places where you can look at getting uh, some hardware. What do you guys think? Uh, Orion would probably be the biggest. That's probably the one that gets mentioned the most. Uh, there's also Sterizona, uh OPT, Oceanside Photo and Telescopes, uh, Anacortis, uh, boy, um, Hands-On Optics. I've done a little bit of work with them. Uh, yeah, there's there's quite a few, but Orion's probably the largest. You know, they 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 do a whole bunch of importing. Yeah, Orion's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I I have very few complaints about Orion's equipment. And and how is just you go to Orion, you just search for it, or how can we direct yeah, Mr. Meeker here? Yeah, te oh, uh, telescope.com is their website. Right. And I would strongly suggest. I wish I had the book sitting here. Uh. Getting a book by Terrence Dickinson called Night Watch. Yeah, uh, that's a book. I have yes. one in my office. Yeah. Yes, it's it's a a great introductory guide to the hobby of astronomy. It also has uh, a really really nice chapter on how to choose the telescope that's best suited for you, uh, by budget, what you want to do with the scope, and everything like that. But Night Watch is a great book to to start off with before you buy a telescope. Yeah. Um, the other the other suggestion would be before you buy a telescope, if at all possible, see if you can find an astronomy club in your in your locale uh, location. You'll have to do an internet search for your you know whatever city you're in and say astronomy or astronomy club, and and you should be able to come up with something on that. Night Sky Network is another good website for finding yes. astronomy clubs near you. Yeah, I could think of the name when I was active. talking that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cloudy, uh, Cloudy Nights also has a uh, classified section. Uh, yep. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. I got, I got a nice Astro guy to work in. And okay. Craigslist, of course. I mean, there's so many places you can get a good scope. I'm oh, actually nice selling a telescope. Star. Oh. Nice guy network star. Ah. I got a pin. I'm very proud. <laughs> 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 I signed up our... our um, we do. I, I run the uh, public observing at our university, and so I signed up us and my other volunteers as a group on Night Sky Network, so we could get educational stuff. And so they sent pins. Those are excited. So, very great good. site. Very, very good um, place for educational resources for astronomers. Uh, We uh, have a question about the pinwheel galaxy. Uh, sorry, we're only... don't think we have anyone who can image deep sky objects tonight, Shane. Not tonight. Uh, so we are an all-planetary show tonight. And what we have up there now is the, the big round one is the crater Plato. Oh. Uh, on the moon there. That's what we're looking at, yep. Yep, and just above that, towards the top of the screen there, that's the Alpine Valley. That's one of my favorite objects to look at. Sounds like a great place to go, go moon skiing at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's a fault block valley. Uh, people used to think it was a, 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 a meteor came through and grazed the... Uh, um, the surface of the moon and caused it, but once they had the lunar orbiters up there and better imaging, uh, what happened was is that the moon, as it cooled, it literally cracked. That little piece there sunk down, and whatever lava that was in there, there's a little tiny rill or basically a lava tube that goes through there, drained out that whole whole region in there. It's quite an interesting little spot. Lava tube. Lava tubes. Yeah, we got a yeah, lot of them over here. Where? I'm in Oregon. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, we got a lot. Oh, Central Oregon oh, has lots and lots of lava tubes. They they actually had the Apollo astronauts over here uh, doing training on on a couple of lava fields over oh, that's here. That's cool. Yeah. How do they get this? How do they get sound stages out there though? That's the what? Oh, stop! <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We landed on the moon. Uh, we landed oh, on the moon. Oh goodness! Thanks so for saying I am. Hey, we're on YouTube, so I gotta play into it a little bit. I gotta pander to an audience somewhere. Pander to right. the audience. I'm I'm redoing the layout of the um, the planetary surface features glossary on CosmoQuest that was written by Irene Antonenko. She's one of the mm -hmm. the um, the PIs for the Moon Mappers project. And yeah, I'm I'm relearning all of this vocabulary. I originally came across lava tubes, um, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, anyway, I, when that when that is newly new newly wordpressified, I will share that out so you can explore. Wordpressified, okay. Wordpressified. That's been my job all week. So switch over to Chris's view. What are we looking at, Chris? Uh, this is Privatus. Which is uh, you know location of secret NSA moon base uh, and yeah. aliens, obviously. Uh, what about uh, the Nazis? Course. Where are the Nazis on the moon? Uh, they're, Look, the they're on the other side. They're on uh, the other they're side. Okay. Yeah. Mm, I see. I only saw that movie once. <laughs> so, but uh, is that Jimmy Hoffa down there? I, I think I see Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that is him. Cool. Okay, everyone can put that to rest. Teamsters got they got that taken care of. Teamsters on the moon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, kind of reminds me person. of the Ghost Rider. Logo. Yeah, it does. Ghost Rider. Yeah, so I was talking about that on Twitter. And somebody was like, "I remember Ghost Rider. Nobody else remembers it." I'm like, "I do." Oh I man. God, yeah, that's been that's my been 80s a long time for me. Yeah. yeah. Or as no as Brian Lefkowitz comments, a total eclipse of the heart. <laughs> I was waiting for you to get to that one. Oh, <laughs> I was waiting for a great moment for it, and I figure if I'm singing, I might as well go for it. Because we have ten minutes left, and I'll totally joke around. Cold space nerd. Oh. Very cold. My toes, I don't think I've got toes anymore. <laughs> ah, they're oh. overrated. Oh, goodness. Do you don't have the little hot hands in your toes? They don't have those in the UK. Jeez, what, what's with your U.S. Oh. privilege over here, Nicole? If they have it on Amazon, you can get it anywhere. <laughs> oh, man. We're, I should have I so got bad. a giant... I got a box of hot hands for Christmas from my mother. Nice. <laughs> for my oh. astronomizing. Oh, it was on my well. wish list. Somebody oh, they're, they're chemical hand warmers. Yep. Yeah. Pull yep, them out, yep. Nicole. There oh, there. So we're free advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and you just... Uh, you are these the ones that you just break and, and shake you, a little bit? Or? Yeah, you, break, you seal the pack. You break the package and the um, exposure to air starts at warming. It's good for you know, a little over an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. So. Yeah, you just slip them down inside your... your I put them in my Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it beats throwing another kid on the fire, I guess. <laughs> exactly! Because that interferes with your scene. It does. Yeah. Oh, yes, man. I, I had, a, had an instructor that did fisheries work, and she said she put I thought him, you were about to say you had an instructor her. that did burn children. Like, well, you are old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh, that's we're, rough we're tonight. We've, we've got a lot of viewers, and I'm... I wanted to hear the rest of that story! <laughs> what story? What? Oh, the, 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 the instructor in the uh, fisheries and all that, or something else? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yes, no the, geez. Yes, not the burning children. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she worked for fisheries, uh, fish and wildlife, and uh, she doing fish counts and everything like that. So she was wearing her hip waders and all that, and she would pour oh a box of these... Uh, uh, chemical heaters down in her her, her legs just so was, her her legs wouldn't freeze while in oh the room. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, she's she was quite the character. All right, so we're closing in on ten minutes left here. I'm going to do a yeah. quick run through any more comments, and I will try to hit as many as I can that are. Uh, let's see here, uh, Jesus Hernandez. Yes, we are live. So hi, we're live. <laughs> 
rude, crude, and socially unacceptable. That's right. That's what we do. <laughs> See, Jupiter pick shadow was caused by the satellite to the right, Europa. Yes, I believe that yes. was it. Was Europa? So yes, it was. We're uh, actually approaching quadrature where the shadows are are getting cast off to the, sh the side now, as opposed mm -hmm. to opposition when they're cast straight back. So looks kind of oh. cool. So, yeah, so you can actually is... see the moon off the disk of Jupiter, casting a shadow back onto Jupiter. That's cool. You know, I can actually tell which moon it is by the size of the shadow. If you watch them a lot, uh, they, this, the shadows aren't the same size. Uh, Callisto, the furthest one out, actually has a, a big diffuse shadow. And, huh. and Io and Europa have these smaller black dots. You notice it when there's a double shadow transit. You're like, oh, the two shadows are not the same size. They're, right. they're not. It's based on how oh, far away. Oh, David, you never... I, all right, Mr. Me. Fancy That's Pants. Awesome. <laughs> I would never. That's so cool. No, oh, I think it's great. And see, Douglas The uh, more Friday, you observe something, the more you learn. Uh, he comments here, I read once that in 1969 we had the technical capability to land on the moon, but we lacked the capability to fake a landing on the moon. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I've so. seen those reports, too. That Yes, we you know, obviously could get to it the was, moon, but we was, could not actually fake it. It's, it was Stanley Kubrick. They just hushed him up. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's uh, the rumor you always hear. Yeah, that, well, that well, the rumor I heard was that that's why Stanley Kubrick um, made his uh, uh, the, 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 the Stephen King movie um, ah, just evaporated on my shining. brain. Shining. The Shining, yeah, yeah. It made The Shining because he had all these obtuse references to the Apollo program within The Shining. Uh, of course. Yes. It wasn't about a crazy person with an axe. No. No. Okay. <laughs> we have uh, a question back on the event page uh, from Cyrus Capadia. Does anyone have a source where one can procure a good paper moon map? It's a cool not digital, question. but an actual paper Ooh. moon map. I do well, not. National Geographic used to have a really good one, really, you okay. know, wall sized. Uh, I don't know if they still have it or not. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember who made the one that was in. Um, our lab at University of Virginia. We had one, and yeah. I, I, it was in a frame. But I, I know it, it may have been the National Geographic one. Yeah. Uh, also, the Lunar Planetary Institute (LPI) mm -hmm. they might have one. I know they got them online. Which uh, is now being renamed um, Survey. Hmm. I can't remember what this stands for. Yeah, the, uh, I, I may be wrong. Hang on. I, I have yeah, one out of here. Yeah. I have one out of Sky and Telescope. I printed just for quick reference. No, yeah. Not quite free, but I just printed it off. So, and there's the phases of the moon app I've heard about. That's yeah, it's not free. Oh like yes, that. he said but not again, digital. <laughs> oh, not digital. Yeah, yeah, so digital. what you do is you take your face of the moon app, put it into the copy <laughs> machine, and run it. <laughs> <laughs> for for books, one of the best ones is the Rukul moon map uh, that's out of print. So it'd be a little expensive to find one that's even used probably. But Rukul would have a good one. Uh, there's, boy. Norton's does Norton. I have a copy of Norton somewhere. Mm, I have a moon map. There? I don't know. No Norton. I, well, if it did, it's 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 you know it's not low res. Not, yeah. Yeah, low res, not that detailed. Um, but Rukul is really good. Uh, the book I really enjoy reading, but it's more technical, is um, uh, was it James Woods? Uh, personal map. A uh, personal guide to the moon, where he instead of breaking the moon up into grids, uh, he takes the moon and breaks it up into regions and explores each region of the moon. Uh, okay, that's very really fun. And of course, back. there are the, um, the U.S. Geological Survey maps of the moon, which are available. Uh, may not be as useful for naming craters or anything, but they did do geological survey of the moon uh, for the Apollo. Yeah. Map. Yeah, the USGS site on online is pretty extensive. If you want to know like every little like one kilometer yeah. crater that, that's out there. Hey, yeah. some of us do. See, so, yeah, Douglas Friday. You know, Night Watch is the first book I've that is both a hardcover yet lays completely flat. Your public library likely also has copies of it. Yeah. Somebody in, in our science building move at the university, there were people were given away boxes of books that they didn't want to move, and there was literally st sitting right outside my office a box with three copies of Night Watch just sitting there. I was like, oh my god, mine! Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. I mean, it, was, it was an older edition. It's probably the edition I used as a kid, but yeah. So a bunch of us in the no, office. It's, all got it's a, copy. a great <laughs> reference guide. So I give them out as presents. I've got a question here from Scott Chapman, and. I'm going to field this one over to Nicole. 
So are mm. craters always round? We've seen images of asteroids, etc., that are not spherical. So That's tell a good us question. this Cosmo Quest over there about <laughs> craters you on the moon. You can't tell. My name is all. Are you Patrick pixelated. Stewart? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to be Patrick Stewart now. <laughs> it's it's yes. so pixelated anyway. Yeah, yeah. so craters. Um, craters are mostly circular, and I think that has to do with the energy of the impact. It really is so much greater. Uh, the energy of the impact is so high, it really doesn't matter what shape it, your object is coming in to hit it. Um, if it is particularly, if it's something that's breaking into pieces, you may get a chain of craters. Uh, and that would be one way. Um, there are very few elliptical craters. You have to really have a glancing blow. Again, it doesn't matter the, the original shape of the object, but you can get elliptical crater from a glancing blow. Uh, they're they're rare, but they are seen on the moon. So elliptical, maybe, um, but most of them are, are circular. Just that impact energy comes out from the center. That is awesome. Thank you for yeah. the great question, if, Scott. If you can, if David could get into uh, Messier A and B on the moon, that 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 would be a great example. My, that's the elliptical one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My drive motor just died, so oh. <laughs> I, I might be able to to like glide over it. And it looks yeah. like James has cut it out, but Chris has Mars, so I think we're gonna end. I'm actually, uh, Mars. Oh, Mars. I'm actually getting Orion right now. Is that doing? really? Oh. Ah. Uh, for the, uh, the the other moon book, uh, lost my mouse cursor. Uh, other moon book I was talking about that is uh, Charles Woods of uh, the Modern Moon: A Personal View. That's that's a really that nice one. reference book for for lunar stuff. He uh, Charles Wood was on the, part of the was one of the geologists on the Apollo program. Okay. So going through any more comments here, we have a bunch, and I'm try. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to get to all of them tonight. Um, yeah, Jim Meeker. Th so there's a black god on the moon. Is that a supernova? <laughs> uh, <laughs> black hole. Uh, yeah, <laughs> might be a mini no, black never hole. Never living that one down. Nope. Wah wah. Wah wah. All right. Nice, uh, nice shot of Orion. Good ooh. place to wind up. Oh, pretty. Oh, there you go. So, so <clears throat> there is the Orion Nebula. And how is that not being blown out by the moon? I mean, it is pretty bright. But it's it's really bright. Yeah, I've, got the, uh, uh, I've still got my some. ISO setting at like 25,000, yeah. so I'm trying to adjust my settings quickly here. There we go. Oh, there you go. Lower the, uh, lowered the ISO quite a bit. I've got it at uh, five, oh, you got five the seconds. The moon um, is about 30 oh, degrees away. Oh, wow. There you go. And that's okay, just I looking... Nice one with the trapezium. I'm gonna try Good color. A little bit longer exposure here. Yeah. And see what I can get. Keep in mind I'm in the alt azimuth mount, so I can't really do too much without. Uh... So this is not a live view. This is uh, an LRO image. I think this is an LRO image. I'm attempting to screen share. Oh, there we um, go. On uh, Messier. The, yeah. Yes, this, this is the one of the famous elliptical craters on the moon, Messier and Messier A. Uh, so this, again, is from a one impact. It kind of skipped and bounded out and created a second one. Uh, pretty rare, but it's uh, pretty cool. That's yeah. that's the only thing you're going to get non-circular out of a fresh crater. Of course, over time, as it uh, erodes, it can get deformed. Right. Yeah. So there's your elliptical crater in our current surface features glossary on CosmoQuest. Then see, uh, Larry... Larry Maka just commented. Says he just ordered a laminated moon map through Sky and Telescope for about seven dollars. So hey. that is a great deal. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great for binocular work. Uh, if if you have like a pair of seven by fifties or something like that, binoculars, perfect for that. If you're using a telescope, then the uh, uh, the scale starts to break down. You you won't find this, mm -hmm. the finer details on right. that. Well, I, um, I know that There's you're... another one from Brenda Shaw. How detailed do we want? Royal Astronomical Society of Canada has a Lunar Observing Certificate program with a downloadable guide that includes beginner-level maps. So you can, she's got the link there on the event page where you can check that out as well. Yeah, Rascal's good. I, I used to be a Rascal. Rascal for quite a long time. Rascal. <laughs> yeah. No, the, uh, you can you you can be a member at large of of Rask uh, here in the U.S. I, I was oh, one for several years, cool. and good group of people. 
Somebody's slewing. Yeah, someone is. Someone's Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it is that time, so I'm going to wrap it up here tonight. Thank you, everyone, okay. for watching. I'm going to go through with it again. Chris, sir, thank you for braving <laughs> that balmy weather over there in the UK. It's beautifully yeah. warm. Yes. <laughs> Multiple hoodie. Yes. <laughs> you have nested hoods. Well, I, I love nested it. Nested hoods, coat and everything. <laughs> well, thank you very much for for sharing oh. your view of of uh, Mars, Jupiter, and the Moon. We really appreciate it. Oh, no worries. Uh, David. Good. Yay. Thank you what? for breaking your scope for us. <laughs> oh, it just takes a battery change, but luckily oh, okay. it held on for the last five minutes or so. Oh, that's just good. The battery okay. finally died. You just said it died. Oh. I'm like, oh, okay. No, it's, it's, it's the, 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 the oh, 9 volt wow. battery in the drive just went kaput. So. Uh, the whopper is gone. Oh, it's a dog wow. next door. He's a good dog. <laughs> But yeah, if they're in the basement, then they're subwoofers. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm on. It is that time. It Go is. home. Go home. You're drunk. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he <laughs> is home. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> James, thank you. Thank you very much for for showing up and get everything out there. We really appreciate you helping out, Mr. Tom Nathan. Yes, sir. Thank you for the color commentary, as usual. Oh, I, I try to be colorful. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and noisy. I mean, Patrick Stewart. Yay! Patricia come to Stewart. Cosmo Quest. We don't have Patrick Stewart. No. no come over to Cosmo <laughs> Quest, and you can uh, help map these these very circular and less circular craters with us on the Moon and Mercury and Vesta. And uh, we are working on all new science content pages. Uh, similar, co same content but prettier layout, so you'll be able to navigate a little bit easier. Ooh. Really proud of that work. <laughs> My word pressifying of the week. But yeah, come to Cosmo Quest and do science with us. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm Scott Lewis. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be back next week. Is uh, What do you have going on this week, Nicole? What broadcasting Oh, uh, let's see. Monday at noon is Astronomy Cast with Fraser and Pamela. Uh, on Wednesday, we are talking with the um, one of the founders of Pocket Cube on Learning Space. So Learning Space is our educational hangout. We'll be talking with uh, actually, I think it'll be just me. My co-host is at a uh, Georgia Bracey's at a conference. We'll be talking with uh, one of the creators of Pocket Cube, which is a very small, somewhat affordable, so as in car price affordable satellite system. Uh, and then Friday, we're back around to the weekly space hangout. So you'll get your news from us then. Very good. Well, and I'll have a new episode of Space Fan News up on Friday morning, and then we'll have the weekly Space Hangout again at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, and then we'll be having our Space Fan News live at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern to cover our latest episode. So all space things this week, and then next week, Sunday, uh, should be the same time. I don't anticipate we're changing it in, for another few weeks. So same time, virtual star party. So thank you all for watching, for your great comments, for your tweets. Those are the tweets out there. Uh, so thank you, Destruction Channel, I think is what it was. Yes, Destruction Channel. Cool. Thanks for all the tweets out. Uh, we will see you all later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.